Okay, so in this one, uh, we're looking at free body diagrams, and uh, what it tells us up here is when we draw a free body diagram, uh, a dot represents the object, and uh, all forces start on the dot and point outwards. Okay, so what we're going to see for this first example here, uh, we've got a, a book resting on the table, and you can picture there's kind of like a book here, and, you know, the table's down here. We don't need to draw that stuff. We just need the dot. Okay, so there's a dot uh, there that represents the book. What we could say is the force of gravity is holding the book down. That's why the book isn't floating up in the air or something. But the reason the book is not currently falling to the ground is because the table supports it. There's a normal force there. And on the previous slide we saw, um, it says that the normal force uh, is a support force um, that a surface provides when an object rests on it. Okay, so the book is resting on the desk. Um, this is the table's support force, this normal force. I always imagine these forces, it's a little bit like a tug of war. Uh, we've got an upwards force and a downwards force. And if the object is just going to remain at rest, those two forces must be equal. And we'll show that with those little kind of little tick marks that I put through there. Uh, those two forces are equal. If we look at the next one, now I'm pushing on the book. So again, I'll just draw a dot for this one. We still have force of gravity. We still have normal force. And just something to note here, um, when we talk about the, the table's normal force uh, being that support force, um, if an object rests on it, even if the object is sliding, it is still being supported by the table. Okay, So the normal force, you could say, is just a support force that prevents an object from falling down or something like that. Uh, this force is still equal to this force. Uh, now I'm pushing on it and I'm sliding it to the right. So my applied force is going this way. That's me pushing on it. And remember on the, on the previous slide as well, uh, friction opposes motion. So there's going to be FF, force of friction here, opposing motion. Uh, I don't know enough information here to be able to say anything about FA and FF, if they're equal or if FA is bigger or smaller or whatever. Uh, so we just kind of leave it at that. Uh, in this one here, we've got a 10 Newton water bottle being pushed to the right by an applied force. Uh, so again, you don't need to picture, like you don't need, always need to draw a picture, but imagine here's a water, this is a terrible water bottle, but imagine there's my water bottle. Uh, it's resting on the table. You could put a dot in the center. Uh, and what we've got is uh, an applied force pushing it to the right. Okay, and it mentions here the applied force is 40 Newtons. Uh, it mentions that there's a force of friction. Again, assuming that I am sliding this thing to the right, okay, so we're, we're kind of making the assumption that the motion is this way. Friction opposes motion, it's coming back this way. Uh, that's 30 Newtons. Let's see if I can squeeze in here. 30 Newtons, didn't give myself a lot of room here. Um, when they say this, a 10 Newton water bottle, okay, that's a little bit like saying I, I went to pick up a, a 10 pound bag of potatoes. If I said that, you'd understand the 10 pounds is the weight of the object. Uh, we may not have seen this yet, but uh, Fg is weight. And if I say it's a 10 Newton water bottle, what we're kind of implying then is the weight of this object is 10 Newtons. The force of gravity is 10 Newtons. And if that's true, um, again, if I'm, I'm uh, sliding this water bottle, assuming that it's like on the table, uh, sitting in front of me, then I start pushing it, then I would say that there's a normal force as well. That's a normal force there. Uh, also 10 Newtons. Those two forces are still canceling each other out. But what we're asked to find in this case is the net force. Okay, so the net force, sometimes people will say F net. Sometimes people will say the sum of F. It's the same thing. Okay, so same. doesn't matter how you write it. I like this sum, sum sign. We've seen this one before when we did uh, component method. Uh, but just as a reminder, this thing means sum of, the sum of the forces. Okay, so I'm going to say the sum of the forces, or the net force, when we say the net force, it's really sometimes people will use the phrase it's the sum of the um, the sum of the unbalanced forces. Okay, so Fn and Fg are balanced; they're equal. Those two forces are going to cancel each other out, which means the unbalanced forces are Fa and Ff. Okay, so when we say the sum of, sometimes people will write it like this, um, and I didn't write this in here, but I should just say let's say um, up is positive and to the right here is positive. There's my positive directions. So FA and FF is going to go in as a negative. Sometimes people will write just FA plus FF, but when they sub in the numbers, they'll sub in the negative sign. But don't do two negative signs here, okay? Uh, one negative sign is, is enough. Don't put negative uh, here and here. Uh, just one negative sign. Let's get rid of those lines so you don't think those are 
equals or anything. Uh, when we do this then, some of the forces, 40 take away 30, that's 10 newtons, and our, our direction, our first answer direction is always whatever we chose as our positive direction. Um, they didn't actually say this in the question. I'll say east or to the right or something like that. Um, whatever they give you in the question, or if they don't, you could say forwards if they don't give you a direction. Okay, so there's our net force acting on the bottle. Let's do a little bit harder one. Um, let's say I've got a plane flying north. Okay, so let's do this right off the bat. Let's say here's north, here's east. Uh, plane flying to the north. Um, it's pulled by the uh, propeller to the north, um, and the wind pushes it in this direction, east 20 degrees north. Okay, let's draw a little free body diagram. Let's say uh, what we've got is the propeller is pulling it this way. So I'll call it, I'm just gonna call this force one. You could say it's the force applied or something. Force one will, I don't know why it keeps doing that. Uh, force one is 120 newtons. Okay, and then force two, I'll call this one here force two, uh, it is going east 20 degrees north. Okay, so here's a dotted line straight east, and it's kind of going this way. Okay, so force two, 80 newtons. Uh, that is east 20 degrees north. Just like we did when we did component method for adding displacements, uh, what we're gonna have to do with this is break a vector up into its components. So let's see if we can see green on here. Oh, that's not too bad. This is gonna be F2 in the X direction. We're gonna have F2 in the Y direction. One quick thing actually, uh, when we're talking about the horizontal forces, I don't just mean like east-west. Remember, north and south is also horizontal. It's up and down that we're ignoring. So up kind of coming out of the screen or down uh, into the screen. Um, those are the forces that we're ignoring. Okay, so both X direction and Y direction are horizontal here. Okay, so hopefully that's clear. Um, so when I do this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, just like we did with when we did component method, I'm gonna first find, uh, we're gonna have to find these components, but my, my method here is to find what are the sum of the forces in the X direction. Okay, that's gonna be F1X plus F2X. And then I'm also going to try to find uh, what are the, let's go up here a little bit, some of the forces in the y direction, okay, and that is F1y plus F2y. Okay, so I'm going to say north is positive, east is positive, those are going to be my positive directions. We need to find all these components, okay, so F1x, F2x, uh, F1y, F2y. Since F1 is already straight north, that is F1y. Okay, so what that means is F1x is just zero. We saw this when we did displacement. If you were to walk 120 meters straight north, how far east or west did you go? Well, you didn't go anywhere east or west. Same idea here. If this force is pushing 120 newtons north, um, how hard is it pushing in the east or the west direction? It's not pushing in the east or west direction. Okay, so there's my two components. There's F1y and F1x. Uh, we need to do the same thing with F2x, F2y. This one we need to work for a little bit more though. Uh, this is gonna be 80 cosine of 20 degrees. This one over here will be 80 sine of 20 degrees. Okay, we can figure those out. Let's see if I got a calculator here. Uh, we got 20 cosine times 80. Make sure you're in degree mode, by the way, on your calculators. F2x, that's an x right there, uh, 75. 0.1754 newtons. Okay, just keep in mind that is east. Uh, F2y, we got 20 sine times 80, and this is 27.3616 uh, newtons, and this one is north. Okay, so just a reminder, my arrows here are north and east. And again, we can check that over here, right? There's gotta be one of them is east, one of them is north. So just double check that. As we start subbing these numbers in then, just make sure that you follow your positive directions, okay? So F1x is just zero. Uh, so there's sort of no, nothing interesting going on there. Uh, F2x though is 75. I'm gonna put this number in 75.1754. That's east, okay? East is what I chose as positive. This number goes in as positive. This is just 75.1754 newtons. And first answer in the positive direction. This is not my answer, but I need this number. 
We'll do the same thing in the y direction. Okay, so sum of forces in the y direction. Uh, F1y is 120 newtons. Double check that. That's north. North is my positive direction, so it stays positive. Uh, F2y, it is 27.3616. Again, that's north. North is my positive direction. All these numbers are going in as positive. But if there was a negative in there, we would have to include that negative. Uh, this is 147.3616 newtons. And again, north in the positive direction. Okay, not my final answer. I just need these numbers again. Next step, this is going to be a little bit squishy for me, but next step is I'm going to redraw this thing. Okay, so I'm going east and then I'm going north. It doesn't actually matter that which one comes first, but let's say here's east, then here's north. Okay, this is 75.1754. This one over here, 147.3616. This is what I want to find. Okay, this is my sum of forces, or my F net, if you want. We always want a tail end angle as well. Okay, so to find that sum of F, I'm just going to use some uh, Pythagoras. So 75, 1754 squared, and 147, 3616 squared. It's a lot of decimals. We probably didn't need to keep quite this many. So this thing, squared plus 75, 1754 squared. And don't forget to square root. Uh, it is uh, 165.4291. We also need that angle. I'm a tan guy, so tan theta is opposite. One, whoops, 47.3616 over adjacent. Uh, let's do that. 147.3616, 75.1754, and inverse tan or second function tan. This is uh, 62.97. Okay, so my net force, my sum of F, uh, we've got kind of two sig digs as we're going up here. Uh, it's approximately 1.7 times 10 to the 2 newtons, and that is east, I'll call it 63 degrees north. Okay, so there is that actual final answer, and we'll put some extra, extra flash on this thing. There's your kind of final answer, final, final. Uh, the other ones with boxes are not uh, sort of the final answers. Okay, so that's how we find net force. Sometimes it's nice and easy like the previous one. Uh, sometimes we've got to do work like we did when we did uh, component method, that kind of thing. Um, we're just adding these forces together. And that is it.